Conquering item A2 of the rubric has to do with clarifying your student objectives and making sure that they are active. So in A1 of the review, the reviewers will make sure there are objectives for every one of your class units. For A2, the reviewers will be looking closely at those objectives and making sure they are active and measurable. Specifically, they will be looking for active measurable verbs like identify or evaluate or assess or create. Your best resource for active verbs in your objectives is Bloom's Taxonomy. Rewording your student objectives to include them will bring all of your unit objectives into alignment and make learning clearer for your students. Here's an example. An incomplete objective would sound like this. This week we'll look at the American Revolution and discuss its causes. On the surface, that seems great, but when you look at it more closely, it's not very active. The incomplete example is more of an activity than an objective because there's no demonstrable outcome here. You can't measure look at or discuss or even words like understand and know for that matter. You need to write your objectives using active measurable verbs. So the aligned example includes summarize why the American colonists were successful in defeating the British in the American Revolution. That's that's something the students can do, and it's something that can be measured. You can measure whether or not they successfully summarized why the American colonists were successful in defeating the British in the American Revolution. They can either do that or not. Make inferences and draw conclusions between conflicts over taxation in the colonies to the same issues in present day United States. Again, we have something that, this, that can be measured that is active. The students will make inferences and draw conclusions or they will not. The use of Bloom's taxonomy can help instructors direct and guide both teaching and learning. In writing the objectives, you can make certain that you are allowing your students not only opportunities to test knowledge and comprehension on the lower order thinking skills, but also that they're engaging in higher order thinking skills, such as evaluating and synthesizing and analyzing and applying. Clear and measurable unit objectives are also critical in helping an instructor identify content and assessments necessary to meet all their learning goals. Some instructors wonder if these unit objectives are SLOs. And while they are outcomes, course level objectives or SLOs identify the more overarching student understandings and higher level thinking skills. What is the course accomplishing? What are students walking away after they've taken the whole course? Unit level objectives break down skills and knowledge into specific and discrete skills. So how are we building to the final outcome? What little pieces are the students mastering with each unit? Sometimes unit tasks are confused with learning objectives. A task is an activity to be performed, like watch a video or read a chapter in the textbook or write an essay. The learning objectives is how the students will demonstrate their learning. What will they explain? How will they summarize? What will they analyze? What will they predict? What will they design? When I write my introductory pages and outline my objectives, I always follow that up with a list of tasks. And you can see the difference right here. So the objectives include words like identify and articulate and compare and appraise. The tasks are read, watch, navigate, read about. 
That way I get both of them right up front with the students. They know what they'll be doing, and then they know how they'll be applying their learning.